Coming up on ECG, I didn't write another intro thing. <laughs> the bat pro proposal. Oh, wow. Uh, Sony loses its head. Cooking up a Bob's Burgers movie. All this and more coming up on the East Coast Geek Podcast. Welcome to episode 114 of the East Coast Geek Podcast for Friday, October 13th, 2017, where we bring you all the latest news in comics, movies, and gaming. I'm your host, Jeremy, and with me always is the beautiful, the bearded, Opu. Understatement of the year, right? Uh, <laughs> of course, always. Um, and you haven't even noticed that I trimmed my beard? Oh, I didn't notice its shapeliness. I apologize. Yes, I've shaped it a little bit, and I've been using this uh, bad. It's called Badass Beard Shampoo and and Oil. There's like two separate things, so I use the oils. You know, I got to look good at work. Sorry, I was adjusting the, myself. I was adjusting the five Charlie Brown hairs I have on my head here. <clears throat> Grow your beard, man. No. This is what you need. See, you can That's, you can do the shaved head thing. It grows. But you got the beard. It grows in all white trashy. Like it doesn't work. Uh, look, I, 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 you gotta own the white trash look like me. That's why I look like a dock worker half the I, time. You know, there's that one guy. There's that one guy that's a meme, the redneck guy. I should look uh -huh. like that. There you go. Yeah, yeah, get you a mullet. That's what you need. You need we bought up here in a mullet. <sighs> Business in the front, party in the back. So, what have you been up to? Well, a couple of things. Um, I, um, my since my daughter's starting to walk, we've been bringing her down to the basement because carpet. It's more carpeted down here, so better grip for her crawling and playing and in the meantime instead of being a responsible parent and making sure the child doesn't you know knock anything over i was playing slime rancher on the xbox one while she knocked over things and while she decided to go on a like a massive tear and pull all my 3ds cases out and all that kind of stuff and throw them across the room but it's all good it's it's plastic it'll fix it'll be okay but um, Slime Rancher's pretty fun. If you don't know about it, basically you are on this alien planet and there's all these different types of slimes and they put out this stuff that apparently is used for like all kinds of things. Some are used for fuel, some are used for metallurgy, some are used as uh, performance enhancers. Um, and so you breed the slimes and you feed them and you take care of them. And it sounds, it's, it, it kind of gets... A, it, not too in depth. It's pretty casual. He likes it. It's cute. He got it for his birthday. He loves it. No, I got it for free on Xbox no. One. One night, no, 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 no. I'm pointing at my son on the other side. Of the oh, camera. oh, oh! He plays it. Yeah, he plays it. He is oh, one of his. It's pretty it was fun. One of his birthday gifts. So it doesn't have a strong end game though. Unfortunately, it's kind of like a, a Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley. Where well, Stardew Valley and Harvest Moons have more plot to them, but. You just kind of keep going and going and exploring new stuff, which is fun, and the upgrades are fun, and uh, you know, but it's it's a it's a nice little casual game to play around with. Right. Um, we like casual yes. games. What, what's up? <laughs> I said we like casual games. Yeah, you know, I do like the intensive games. You know, your your heavy RPGs, your horror games, your action games. But every now and then, you just need a game that you can relax with, like. Again, your Harvest Moons, your Stardew Valley, so this is a good one where you just run around. And there's not much, there's only really, unless you fall off the map and into the ocean, the only other real threat to you is a couple of slimes that are unintentionally mean, like radioactive ones, or the Tars, which try to eat you. Right. But, you know, so it's, it's a pretty laid-back game, and I really enjoy it. Cool. So, so the other thing, oh, this no. is last minute because I just talked to my buddy about this, is that I've got a new D&D book, and I'm just opening this now. Oops. Just opening this now. He's just it's, opening it now, in case you didn't hear the first two times. It, yeah. Um, it is the Talador campaign setting for Critical Role, released by uh, Green Ronin. So my buddy bought this, and he... Some, some, there was a mishap with the shipping and stuff, and so he gave it to me. Because he's sweet, and I love you, Taylor. You're beautiful. But I haven't watched Critical Role or listened to it. I've been... I'm, 
I've well, been trying to catch up on Critical Hit. I mean, that's that's the one that we all want to be like, though. I mean, that's got, you know, the voice of Illidan, the voice of McCree from Overwatch, as well as plenty of others. Yeah, Critical Role has a lot of uh, celebrity guys on there, and they have, like, the Felicia Days and Chad Hardwick, but, uh, yeah. you know, the just at a glance, the art is really good. Look at this. And the binding is really nice. The book looks good. Um so, so I it, really it, would like to read this, and maybe there's stuff I can merge into the uh, the campaign that I'm doing. Yeah, there you go. At least give some uh, is, inspiration. It's, so it's the campaign book, right? Right. It's the it's the campaign setting. I guess it's like the core rule book. Oh, okay. Um, and it's it's built for fifth edition. Oh, so nice. I, okay. So you don't have to do anything to you know <clears throat> merge it around. And I'm really enjoying f- fifth edition. It's um, I know. Well, every edition has its haters. Ever since what, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, there you um, go. But it's not the original. Uh, well, I know. <laughs> I'm saying any like no, I second. Know. No, that was the complaint I meant. Oh, oh yeah, Advanced there TV. you go. But um, no, I, this is really cool. And they're wrapping up, aren't they? They're almost done. Crit- critical critical role. role. Yeah, I think I saw there was a there was an interview for the uh, the stuff for the Xanathar's Guide uh, mixed in. Mm-hmm. But uh, they did an interview with Matthew Mercer and talking about ending it. So, so they're going to be at their at the end of their campaign here soon. But uh, they've been going for quite some time. Oh, do they mean like they're going to start a new one, or is I it's going to be the end? Of I don't know if role? they're going. Yeah, I don't know if it's the complete end of Critical Role or for, if they're going to start up a new one or not. But they may bring in a whole new cast, call it something else or whatever. But yeah, you know, have these guys back here every now and then do a guest appearance or something. So that yeah, the, it it looks like it's a really good, a really good playthrough. I'd like to eventually get around to watching it, but I just haven't yeah, yet. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm trying to catch up on Critical. I really love those guys. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm still in like 4E or whatever they were playing. Holy crap! Yeah, they were playing 4E before. Yeah, but um, again, thank you very much, Taylor, for letting me keep that because one, I I'm a sucker for books, and two, I'm really big into D and D again finally. Nerd. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Geek, my bad. Geek. All right. Exactly. So uh, I've been doing the same thing I always do. It's really boring. I hate it. I've played tons of Battlegrounds in the past couple of weeks. Tons of Battlegrounds. He Uh, says he hates it, and then he tries to get me to play all the time. I hate this. Play with me. the The worst part about it is it's so addicting and so much fun that I skip playing anything else. Like, I sit down to intend to play, uh... I think I've gotten two or three hours into uh, Shadow of Mordor so far uh, on this new playthrough, and uh, I still have, uh, thanks to my friend uh, Colin, I have a copy of Rise of the Tomb Raider to play that's installed and just sitting there on my drive. Um, uh, Between that, Rainbow Six again every now and then, and then uh, I started playing Ghost Recon uh, this weekend because, well, because I missed it. And because uh, Scott uh, Wicked Hyerson, who's been on the show a couple of times, uh, he he picked it up because it's only fifteen bucks on Amazon this weekend. Uh, like on, digitally? Digitally, yeah. 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 Uh, we we had a blast. That game, like I said, is way more fun when you have somebody to mess around with. Our hijinks are on my Twitch channel. Holy crap, man! We got into so many bad situations. Uh, it also had. It was also uh, some of uh, Scott jumping in headlong when he's not ready for something yet. Uh, and slowly trying to retract back, and you know, after a while, we got we got into the groove and we did fine. But we still messed up and got killed t- terribly. And hey, let's go take out this base of the uh, the military forces, and uh, we'll be good, right? Oh, None speaking of, of hijinks, good. did we discuss this last week? What did we play Dead by Daylight? Oh no, we did that. We did that the morning before we were supposed to do the show, and we ended up having to cancel because uh, everything went haywire that weekend. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, we played Dead by Daylight. We uh, shared it on the page, and it should be. It should have gotten shared on the Twitch, but it's on my Twitch. I'll have to copy it over and put it on the uh, the YouTube page because that was hilarious. Uh, if you want to hear Mitch scream like a little girl, especially when something's chasing him and he can't see it. Yeah, yeah, I know you make that gaping look, but you know it was it was actually pretty interesting. And man, uh, what's his face? Uh, Michael Myers, he's terrifying in that game. Holy crap. Oh, yeah, no. 
And then I like after the fact I decided to read up on other things. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize I could do all this. Like if you're the last survivor and you have three generators running, two or three generators running, the escape hatch opens up for you and you can escape by yourself. Oh, holy crap. I, yeah. Just in general? Yeah. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and like yeah, so it was like really should have decided to research this what we did the morning of everybody just for your awareness is i opened up my steam account he opened up his he's like okay what do we both own that's multiplayer and it was it turned out to be nothing yeah um well i buy a bunch of solo games because i don't want to compare myself to other people because i'm terrible at games because he doesn't like playing with others ah you know what we had those times we played uh dying light that were great yeah that one's a lot of fun that was fun i need to get it back for uh it looks, you get it on PC, don't you? Yeah, I've got Are it on they PC. Still, they're still updating it. Yeah, they're still updating it. They actually just started a new round of updates, which is yeah, pretty that's amazing. That's unreal. Yeah, that's for, it's dedication. What, a couple years old now. Mm-hmm. The gameplay is is great, other than the quick time event to end this the solo campaign. Yeah, the, or, well, the that, campaign in general. That, mm. Yeah. So so anyway, so yeah, that's that's what I've been doing, uh, along with all the other fall stuff with the family, because uh, you know pumpkin patches are open, apple orchards. Don't go to the Apple Orchard on a holiday weekend, by the way. That was one of the other things we tried to do that, that Saturday. Was we went to an Apple Orchard nearby. Mm-hmm. It was packed. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. So, all right. Well, why don't we get into the, the meat and potatoes of the show? Uh, we have plenty to cover and some things that aren't in the notes that should be noted. Um, right. Yeah, there was actually a ton of stuff that we uh, I was going to add in. But after I saw our notes, I was like, uh, oh, maybe... Our notes? Maybe we'll you mean your wait notes? Later. I think huh? I added two of these things. <laughs> yeah, right. okay. Well, my notes, my all of my rants. But So all I'll right. go ahead and start this off. Go for it. Hey, Wolverine is back. The actual Wolverine, we should be saying. Um, Marvel Comics has revealed to comicbook.com that the original Wolverine is making comeback in the pages of Marvel Legacy Number 1, which was released a couple weeks ago, I believe. Um, and he's packing one of the most powerful items in the Marvel Universe, an Infinity Stone. Oh, no. Yes, Logan is back from the dead, Marvel Editor-in-Chief Axel Alonso told comicbook.com. After three years of a Logan-free Marvel Universe, except for the fact that you had old man Logan running around. Right. Um, Logan is back, claws popped and ready for action. How he came back, why he came back, and just... How he came into possession of that Infinity Stone are part of the fa- uh, fascinating story that's going to unveil soon, as well as some in some unusual places. So, for those of you who don't know, Wolverine has been dead since the events of 2014's Death of Wolverine, Ugh. miniseries by Charles So and Steve McNiven. Yes, um, because the love lost between Fox and Marvel, they decided to kill off one of the most popular and beloved characters that made them tons of money. Yeah, and they stood there and they is, and they said, "See, we can do this anytime we want." X Men, who are they? They're gone. They're in the back lot. <laughs> now they've realized their mistake, I believe. But um, so he was believed to have suffocated after being encased in hardened adamantium while stopping the plans of Doctor Abraham Cornelius, founder of the Weapon X program. Logan's friends then had his body, adamantium shell and all transported to a secluded cabin in the wilderness where he could rest. Since then, the mantle of Wolverine has been passed down to Logan's surrogate clone daughter, Laura Kinley, formerly known as X-23. Another version of Logan, better known as Old Man Logan, also arrived in the Marvel Universe from an alternate dystopian timeline. Both Laura and Old Man Logan have headlined their own ongoing series and worked with the X-Men since the Secret Wars event in 2015. It's unclear at this time what Logan's return to the Marvel Universe means for Lar and Old Man Logan, but for now, the best he is at what he does seems to be wrapped up in a larger story. One, on a truly cosmic scale, set up by the events of Marvel's Legacy Number 1. So, at the very least, he's going to come into conflict with um, Guardians of the Galaxy, because I think they're on a big Infinity Stone hunting kick right now. Oh. Yeah, in the movies too, right? <laughs> well, that makes it, sense. Oh, what a coincidence in the movies too. Um, so yeah, so obviously we we've talked about it on the show, and tons of people are talking about it online. 
that Marvel is kind of suffering right now. So for them to bring back and if, one of their... What? Go ahead. And if Marvel's suffering, everyone's suffering. We've discussed that too. And yeah, it's, I know. You know, they are one Call of the... <laughs> again, they're one of the biggest entertainment companies on the planet. I mean, even more so now that they've been... In fact, we're, we have mostly Marvel news today. So that's a surprise. No, <laughs> no I mean, <laughs> I know I'm kidding. Yeah, I, I just feel bad. Like they're the most like, newsworthy right now. Yeah, right With now the they're they're, they're making headlines and not for good reason. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of Old Man Logan and Old Man Logan prequel is happening. Old Man Hawkeye. I didn't even pull notes for this. I just wanted to say this is completely unnecessary. There's no reason for that. We had that. Story should have been told is, with Old Man Logan. Is Pizza Dog going to be there? Uh, probably not, because this takes place about 30 or 40 years into the future at oh, the yeah. least. And dogs don't live as long as that. Okay. Yeah, not even comic book dogs. Good so um, if you want to see Old Man Hawkeye, just read Old Man Logan. He was great in that. He was, bli- he was a blind man driving the Spider-Mobile. That for some reason, Venom is involved, even though Venom was a dinosaur. And, okay, the symbiote was wrapped around a dinosaur, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yes, yes. No, no, no. Yes, yes. it was no, wrapped no, no. around a dinosaur, and then I think it had a bunch of Spider-Man clones. Am I thinking of Age of Apocalypse? I have to go read Old Man Logan again. Uh-oh. Uh, my, I'm, I'm getting old, people. I had to bust out the BCGs to start reading my, my TV screen from afar, so... Mm. Hey, you son, Shut. get off my lawn. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, go ahead. No, I was going to say that, uh, yeah, it, it seems like an unneeded kind of thing, and which came first, the Hawkeye or the Wolverine? And I'm pretty sure it's, you know, the Wolverine. I, I don't understand why it would be a prequel. How, how would they do that anyways? So, in, in Old Man Logan's story, I don't know if you've read it or not, but... Oh, is it just a prequel to Old Man Logan? Well, it's t- it tells. I guess it tells how he got involved in the situation. Oh, okay. That he's in an old man Logan, but overall, what happened is the villains got together one one like weekend, and they realized they outnumbered the heroes like fifty to one, and half of them were far more powerful than the heroes. So they just all teamed up together and swarmed over the heroes basically overnight and wiped them out. And so the the U.S. was split up into four sections. Like there was a Hulk territory, there's a Red Skull territory, there's a uh, I think Magneto or Doctor Doom has a ter- territory. Um, that kind of thing. Wonderful. And, hmm? I said wonderful. The territory yeah, is the United States. It's kind of dark. Yes, but it's good. All right. Uh. Well. Uh. Oh no. That, that was what this headline was about. So, uh, Catman, or <laughs> Catman, Catwoman. Man, there is a Catman. Cat, I know, but that's not the one that's listed here. Uh, Catwoman responds to Batman's proposal. This is a uh, pretty, uh, pretty important uh, goings on, correct? Yeah, well, this is a pretty major event. You know, they've uh, been kind of. Will they or won't they? They've been they've been cat they've been catty with each other for a while. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that joke will drive me batty. Oh, good one. All right. So, so uh, what did she say? Go ahead. What did she say? She does say yes. After all, um, at first, I guess he tried to propose to her earlier in the year, and he kind of did it in a way that was basically like, "Hey, marry me." And she was like, nah, you're going to have to do it right. So he ends up getting down on one knee and it's like, hey, you know, you're messed up, I'm messed up. Let's be messed you know, up together. Let's be messed up together. And, she's, and she basically, and she says yes, and she's teary-eyed. And this is what I find interesting, is that this is, obviously, aside from, like, the strange Golden and Silver Age stories, of where, like, Batwoman was trying to get Batman to marry her, and stuff like that, it's like... And, you know, and obviously he's played, had plenty of girlfriends, but this is like the first time we've seen Bruce Wayne actually get married, or at least want to get married. Right. And I find it funny that DC, in a way, are letting their heroes grow up or evolve in new, unusual ways. Right. That feel kind of natural. 
you yeah, know? Yeah, well, everybody, everybody kind of knew him and Selena had a thing for the longest time, but they ne- neither of them ever admitted to it. The closest we really got was pro- well, at least in cinematic, was in what Batman Returns. I don't even think yeah. in the Dark Knight series that there was really anything going on between uh, was it Bale well, and uh, the acting and writing was so bad that it was hard to tell with that one. <laughs> but the action uh, was great. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, but no, so it's. Um, so we're we're getting to see the characters evolve in a new and different way, and one that seems far more organic than what again to bash on Marvel, what Marvel's doing lately, where they're basically uh, for having psychics basically rip people's minds apart and mold them into a new way, like they did with Iceman. Um, or hey, remember Spider Man was married for years, and that was actually a really beloved marriage. Yes, it was rocky. They had they struggled. Guess what? Like normal human beings, marriage is not perfect. It's right. A, it's it's sometimes a struggle, you know. Remember that, uh, ladies. <laughs> and yes, guys, do our we do our best to balance everything, you know. And it probably gets even more complicated when you're a super powered superhero that's constantly, you know, risking his life. But. Um, <laughs> So while DC's letting characters evolve, Marvel, on the other hand, they have Spider-Man sell his marriage to the devil. Really? Because of responsibility. Remember that? One more day? Everybody remembers that. Because it was stupid. It was terrible. Uh, It made no sense. Especially when Spider-Man went around... Okay, so back up. For those that don't know, during the Civil War, which led up, which one more day followed... During the Civil War event, Spider-Man amassed himself on national television. A guy with so many hated enemies, obviously one of them was going to strike at his family now that they knew who he was. And the Kingpin organized his... Well, I think he was trying to assassinate his wife or or Mary Jane, but they ended up shooting his uh, Aunt May. And so she was dying in the hospital. She begged him to just, hey, just let me die. I'm going to go... Be with Ben again. You know, it was like this really sweet tender moment. He travels across the world asking all these superheroes and supervillains that are super geniuses to help him. And none of them could solve an elderly woman with a gunshot wound. Something that we can solve with our basic technology these days, (laughs) you know. Um, And let let me remind people. He asked people like Mr. Fantastic, who... Built a device that ripped the gates of heaven open to pull his friend's soul back from heaven and bring him back to life. Right. You're telling me he can't cure a gunshot wound. I guess not. he asked Doctor Doom, the second one of the second most powerful sorcerers on the planet, the guy that invented time travel, the guy that has a black hole in his basement, the guy that ripped the powers of a god out of a god while he's being tortured to death while Dr. Doom was being tortured to death by that very same guy. The guy that kidnapped the Silver Surfer and stole his powers, too. Right. He cannot do this. The Beast, Dr. Hank McCoy, sorry, this this will be my last example. The guy that knows more about genetics than just about anybody on the planet cannot help save an old lady with a gunshot wound. (laughs) Mm-hmm. That's the kind of writing that we've been getting these days. Um, So, yeah. Right now, Spider-Man's actually living on Mockingbird's uh, patio. That's character development. So, anyway, so this is actually going to be an interesting twist. It's going to be see, see, uh, you know, how these characters are going to grow and adapt. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it falls through. One, because status quo is God. And two, unlike Spider-Man, who's fairly well-adjusted, and Mary Jane, who's fairly well-adjusted, or... Uh, you know, your your other normal superheroes, more sane superheroes, right. um, that their marriages fall apart. Batman has got a lot of mental issues. Catwoman, maybe, maybe the newer version of Catwoman does, but nothing quite on his crazy level. So if this ends up falling apart, it would be like, well, that actually kind of makes sense that it would fall apart because he has t- trouble Keeping emotional bonds. I mean, look at all of his apprentices. They usually end up hating him. Right, or, right. You know? No, I got I, you, I got you. Yeah, so um, so it, that would feel more organic than him going 
to that not not finish dark side and <laughs> selling his soul. So hey, give me the divorce papers. Right. So anyway, so that's that's that. So Gretz, Bruce, and oh. Be sure you get her to sign a prenup. Remember, you are a billionaire, and she is a professional thief. Right. So, um, so you ready for to jump to this next one? Yeah. This, is, on. this is another quick one. Hang on one so, second. Oh. Hang on one second. Fixing your your audio was off. Oh, All I'm right. sorry. No, 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 you're fine. It's not your fault. It was the it's Skype because it's being retarded. Okay. Because it's Skype. All right. Uh, so uh, the next thing we got uh, this is this is in the wake of uh, and you should have put this next to the other one. Yeah. Uh, why don't we do Why don't we do the the other one first, the IDW one? Okay, we'll do that one real quick. So, uh, Big Hero Six is getting a comic finally, and it's going to be tied into the Disney XD show, which I don't know is, if it's on yet. Was it coming or what? Because I think we said I it started. Didn't. Hmm. I think we said it had started. Oh, has it? I haven't. I haven't watched it yet. I've seen like the uh, Groot and Rocket shorts, the CGI ones on YouTube. Those are actually kind of funny. Like, like you know, I mean, the the plots are obviously basic and <laughs> kind of cliche, but they're funny. Yeah, and it, they're decently oh. well animated for their CGI. Oh, this was weird. I was looking at it. It says on March 14th it was renewed for a second season, but it doesn't air until November. So I guess they already like what they've seen previously? Yeah, and okay, and if since it's Disney, they have a weird scheduling. Remember Gravity Falls, which was, you know, an instant classic, you know, yeah. halfway through the first season, and then they would show, like, one episode every month or every two or three months, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I don't so, know. It's it's wait, weird. For, uh, but, go ahead. But this is weird, though, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. Well, because you haven't said who they're. Did you say who they're publishing with? No, not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay. Okay. So, anyway, so Big Hero 6, which apparently is popular, I'm going to have to check it out, see maybe if I can find a preview or, or a, a clip of it on YouTube at least so I can check it out. Um, they. Uh, they're getting a comic book, and they've had comic books, but this is going to be like the first one majorly based on the cartoon, which is based off the movie. So, but who do you think is publishing this Marvel property? This is really weird, but it's, uh, it's, IDW. it's IDW. IDW Comics. That's that's very odd, and it's odd because Disney owns Marvel, and it would be easy for them to just say, "Hey, go go run this." Yeah. So. <sighs> And you know this this uh, you know this could be considered a minor thing, but considering like a lot of rumors are spreading that Mo that DC is not pleased, uh, DC Disney is not pleased with what Marvel's been doing in house with their comics. This kind of makes sense, uh, and IDW more or less has been knocking it out of the park with their comics. I mean, they just picked up Sonic. Remember, we talked about that a few weeks ago. That's a big and, one. No. Yeah, that, first of all, that's the. That's, that was the longest running comic in history. Yeah. I didn't mean to short um, sell it. In Western history, at least. Um, so that's, I mean, that's major. And Sonic is a, is, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a growing, regrowing franchise after Mania. Mania, again, was knocking the reviews out of the park for those people that could actually play it, game journalists. Right. Um, but, for them to pick up a Marvel title, I don't know. And, you know, it's like this, and this isn't like, oh, well, Marvel printed Star Wars before, and now somebody else is printing it. Oh, well, Marvel used to print Transformers. Yeah, but Big Hero 6 is an in-house comic, as far as I know. They were developed for Marvel, or by Marvel's people. Yeah, they were. So, well, they were, while well, they were adapted from the, the manga, right? No. It wasn't a manga before? I thought it was. I thought you said it was, and it was different than the movie was. No, 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 no. It's a com. No, they say there is a manga. Okay. Which I've got. I think I've got the first cut, but that's based off the movie. Oh. Okay. Loosely translated. Okay. There is a Big Hero Six has been around since like the eighties, I think, and right. they are very different. One, um, uh, Baymax can like transform into looking like a human and stuff. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, anyway. That's this, that. this is like this is not something unheard of either, as far as what's going on with Marvel and Disney right now. 
but Marvel's kind of shaky as well. Um, and the, this kind of this kind of reminds me of what I had read. But uh, you know that Marvel now has a show on Hulu as well, right? Runaways, yes. Uh, which, right? Is that the one you're talking about? I because yeah. the trailer was released or the show's been released, and I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I have. I haven't either. But it's uh, it strikes me as odd because they've already been doing the thing with Netflix. Mm-hmm. But not only that, but they're about to launch their own streaming platform. So why, what the why's the rush? Why don't they just hold on? Which also makes me wonder about Lock and Key. Which oh no, that's gonna be on Disney XD, right? The the teen. The was it Lock and Key? Was that the one? Lock and Key is something different. I think Lock and Key is kind of a horror yeah. thing. Oh, I don't think that's going to be Disney. What's so the other with, one? with Runaways, that was a contract from a, from earlier this year. So that was already locked in with Hulu. Yeah, but you figure uh, you figure earlier this year they already knew they were going to launch their own platform. It's not something you just wake up and say, "Hey, we're going to do this tomorrow." Or maybe I mean maybe they wanted to sit back and see. You know, they were trying to test the waters, and they might, maybe they were waiting to see what the response was with their releasing a bunch of, especially more recent Disney films on Netflix, and to see, like, how many people are viewing them to see if it was warranted. But then again, they're Disney. Everybody's going to be watching their films all the time, especially if they release some of their TV shows. Like, if they release the classic DuckTales, if they put the new DuckTales on there, CBS is no Disney, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to beat up on Star Trek, sorry. Uh, I well, still... I mean, you're not wrong. Where you... Tell me where you're wrong yet. Yeah, I know, I know. That's the there, thing. There's it... not many people that are Disney. That... No, no, and that's the thing. That's yeah. the only thing that Disney's got going for them is they're Disney. Otherwise, yeah. people that try to launch their channels aren't going to be successful. But Disney has a chance. That's why That's why it's curious to me. I, I, I feel like they would have already had this planned and already would have known and would have held off, you know? What's delaying? I don't, for a I don't know of because months? they're well. They're not putting all, all their eggs in one basket. They don't want to spend fifty million dollars on a TV show, put it on their own chat, their own streaming service, which might fail, as opposed to one that's already been established, like Netflix and Hulu. Make them do the work for you. You're just right. licensing your brand to them. They're funding everything. Right. You're just having to sit back and supervise it. Them having to use their money against it. That's a risk more against them. They can always pull those rights, or, or you know, wait for those contracts and refuse to renew them, or, or what? I don't know. I do not know contracting at that level, right? Uh, because right. it's like dealing with copyrights. Because Fox, as long as they put out a crappy movie, they get to renew them. Yeah, no, I got you. I got you. Um, so I could, I could understand why they would do something like that. But go I, ahead. I just, I just think I, I don't know. Uh, they're gonna have to have something to drive besides the, you know, current and past and. St- future movies but i i can see what you're i can see what you're talking about because it's no work for them to lease out that that title so i understand yeah and and you know if they again if they get can get enough people hooked elsewhere which i mean again who doesn't know disney at this point yeah you know, love them or hate them they're a household name um and you know yeah, they're going to have to make their own like new shows. Maybe, maybe, maybe Darkwing Duck will get a new show. Maybe they'll do more shows like Gravity Falls. Uh, yeah, Lock. You're right. Lock and Key was an IDW horror comic. My bad. Yeah. Which oh. again, um, if they do more stuff like Gravity Falls, that was pretty dark. If you really watch some of those sh- episodes, the one where he's like, "Hey, here, you want a bunch of deer teeth?" and he rips the teeth out of a deer's mouth and just hands them to the guy. Whew. Excuse me. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, man, that, that show is really, really, it, it's for adults and kids really well. That is like the, you know, we always, because I'm a freaking weeaboo or whatever you want to call me, uh, I always compare like the mature Japanese animation to what we get, but that was like the perfect balance of like stuff, you know, yeah. it was for all ages really. You know, you had your simple little kid plots about, oh, well, sometimes you can't be selfish. And then you got uh, Grunkle Stan scamming people or making references to ex-wives or, or you know, yeah. whatever innuendos you want to say. Right. And, and, you know, Disney stuff is sometimes good enough. Or, you know, it covers that sometimes. Sometimes. Not always. But uh, 
that's been the nice thing with some of the animations lately. They they're they're pretty uh like take the regular show for instance. That's another good one. I know it's not a Disney one, but just animation in general. The regular show uh my son enjoyed it and uh I enjoyed it for some of the other stuff that was going on that he didn't really understand. Like uh I don't think he ever realized that, you know, uh who's the gumball machine guy? I can't remember. Benson yeah, he, his his gumballs in his machine looked like he had a beard. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, but just subtle things like that and the, the little things they do through it. Uh, Gravity Falls was a great example, though, that was very, very Disney, but very dark for for the adult the adult side to make sure that you... It's one of those things that you'd like to watch with your kids. I freaking mm-hmm. love watching that with Christopher now. It was it's such a great show. That, I, that didn't make me think of it. Remember, uh, there was a scene where Rigby, the, the raccoon... He's like, man, Vincent's going to drop his balls when he sees the work we did. He's going to be like, oh, no, my gumballs. Yeah. <laughs> like, how did they get my sensors? Yeah, yeah, no kidding. No kidding at all. All so, right. Uh, not, but, so, yeah, so those, those are examples of, like, appealing to all ages and doing it right. Um, with both your jokes and your references or whatever. Um, you know, we haven't even discussed this yet. Real I know. Quick, IDW Publishing announced both on Facebook and its Saturday night panel at the New York Comic Con last weekend, um, I think it was last weekend, yeah, that it, last it weekend. will publish comic books starting in 2018 based on the upcoming Big Hero 6 animated series on Disney XD. No creative team or release date has been announced as the series is still in development, but the publisher promises more details in the near future. Yeah, I guess we'll see. And uh, I bet you it's going to be a pretty decent comic. One, Big Hero Six was a pretty good uh, movie. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Even oh, yeah. like I don't know another I really another it. one I, that I, another one that really did a really good job of blending the adult with the things the kids mm-hmm. will like. You know, it's a very here's, here's, it's a very adult theme, but mm-hmm. it's a lot of flash for the kids so they don't get scared because what they were dealing with is a very serious like moral dilemma. Yeah, I mean, like, you think about it, like, what would you do in that, that situation? You have the guy that killed your brother, be it on purpose or accidentally, right in front of you. You have a robot behind you that can bench press a ton and a half that nobody, nobody in the room can stop. Right. And it only takes a word for you. Oh, especially when he raged that one time. Oh, yeah, Holy when, crap. when he pulled the, the thing and he was, like, weapon mode, mm. that was, like, scary. Yeah. Yeah, it was. That's why I said they do a good job of mixing the light with the dark uh, for that series. Uh, and, I mean, they, they manage that with all the Marvel movies, too. There's some really deep, dark stuff going on, but they manage to balance that line of what they're all, like, at least are right about PG or PG-13. So, uh, I mean, and my son is excited about Thor. He cannot wait. It looks like so much fun, and... And I know there's going to be a lot of bad stuff coming up on that because I know what the word Ragnarok means. <laughs> and so. listen, and I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping that they go dark with that film because it's supposed to be about Ragnarok. All the trailers are making it look light and goofy and fun, and right. I'm like, do you realize what Thor usually dies in the Ragnarok stories whenever they pop up? Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> okay, not. That's sort of this one, but I'm just no, saying no, whenever know, they I happen know. in the comics, he usually dies. Well, but then death is a slap on the wrist in the comics, you know? Not, not even just the comics, man. That's 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 a Norse mythology thing. That oh, well, yeah, thing. so, spoiler alert. Hey, if you haven't read this mythology since it was developed <laughs> almost 3,000 years ago. <laughs> so, uh, alright, so Big Hero 6. Uh, alright, so, this, so this, I wanted these together because... I, I felt like this flowed a little better. Uh, Marvel and Northrop Grumman deal falls through after backlash. This is stu- so. This is continuing stuff that happened at NYCC this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they dropped this plan. Okay, the the plan was to push the STEM fields and aim them at women. And uh, the problem wasn't the fact that but see they're doing something that's good. They're pushing the STEM program, which is important. That's great. Uh, what, what what is it? Science. Uh, what is I can't remember stuff like the last one's mathematics I can't remember what all it is, um. Anyways, uh, uh, it, it's it's a it's a good educational thing, but they're also focusing on on the women as well, which is great because you know, I mean that's the thing we're doing, 
uh, and, and it's all-inclusive. All so that that's an important thing, too. We, it needs to be all-inclusive. I will uh, say but, this. Somebody likened it to, like, the, the picture, uh, which had their super science kids or whatever. Right. They likened it. They're like, it looks like the Burn yeah. King's kids, kid, kids Club team, if you remember those. Yeah. Oh, God, I remember those. Or yeah. I guess you could consider, uh, what would be a better reference for kids these days? I don't know. The Power Rangers, maybe? No, that's too, that's too old, too. Uh, Adams uh, got it right here. Uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So it's 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 a good advancement for technology and, and all that good stuff. Uh, it's a good initiative, but the problem that everybody's having with it is the fact that it's with Northrop Grumman, who handles a lot of government contracts. Uh, most more specifically, weapon weapons contracts. And uh, uh, there's huge backlash on social media and and uh huge huge quotation marks yeah i know huge just means like four or five people complained about it but they were high profile people so you know uh they they canceled the event uh <laughs> honestly this is not the first thing that they canceled from this new york comic con by the way uh but this was this was one of the bigger ones um they they they're they're just giving up in the face of what's you know the current you know they they they're giving up in uh instead of trying to say and trying to justify reasonably they're just saying okay you win that's all they're doing uh it kind of sucks you're absolutely right so here's the thing and they don't they don't seem to realize this yet that no matter what it's heads they win tells you lose whenever you concede to these whiners Right. They were trying to do something what is considered good. There's been a big gripe about not enough women going into the STEM field. So they're trying to motivate. I don't under, I've don't. i never heard somebody say, oh, well, yeah, I read a comic book, and that motivated me to get into science. Right. Um, it's usually, oh, I read this comic book, and it motivated me to get into art or writing. Right. Or, yeah, this was going to be yeah. a broader appeal. I mean, heck, somebody reads an Iron Man comic and they get pretty interested when he does his tech stuff. But this is this was severely focused, or not severely, but laser focused on on the STEM stuff, which is really really mm -hmm. good. And even when they try to do something good, people are ruining stuff. So, so, so yeah, so yeah, I I don't know if Marvel's going to get it now. If it's finally sink, maybe it maybe it'll eventually sink in that. They can't win with these kind of people. They should just push it in anyways. And the people that complain, I absolutely guarantee you, that some of them may read comics, but they must not be well-versed. Because I can tell you, anybody that's ever been to a PX or any other military base, at every freaking checkout line, there's usually a stack of Marvel comics that are for military. For all these people say, oh, well, you just want to uh, push war or these... Uh, you know, whatever they were called, Northman, Grimman, and, you know, I can't, I'm not going to argue what that company does, but to say that you're pushing war where you don't realize that they publish comics directly for the military people, um, you know, where you, what? Yeah. You know, and, like, half the, half your characters in Marvel Art. build weaponry. Yeah. The, only, the only reason Iron Man quit building them is because he was directly affected by it. Right. If he had never been in that situation, he would not have cared. Right. You know? So, and, uh, he, he, and here's the thing. He still builds weaponry, but for himself and S.H.I.E.L.D. occasionally. Right. The mandroids, the helicarriers, well, maybe not the helicarriers, but aspects of the helicarrier came from his design. So he's still, his funding... Well, he's he's wep still doing weapons, so More whatever. But um, so that just goes to show you that you'll never win with with, with these people. So try not, to do something good. I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. you're fine. You're fine. I was gonna I was gonna bring something else up. So finish your go thought. Ahead. Okay. So so this isn't the last thing that Marvel experienced uh, that was not fun from New York Comic Con. Uh, the other thing was Fallout from the previous weekend. Uh, was it previous weekend or was it two weeks before that? Uh, the, uh, it the was like day, in Las, I thought it was just the day before or something. The shooting in Las Vegas? No, because that happened on a Sunday night, didn't it? Anyways, uh, uh, the that event caused them to pull the entirety of what they were going to do with the Punisher at New York Comic Con. Oh, yeah, that, 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 yeah. And um, 
one of the things that came out of there was that they were actually going to show the first episode there. So they decided to pull it in, you know, uh, not not saving face so much, but just being respectful for the for the loss of life from uh, the previous week uh, in Las Vegas, which which I can I'm 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 fine with that. That's that. It's, res- I mean, yeah, it's respectful I can understand enough. it. Um, you know, there's there's pros and cons for both doing it. One, it can. I mean, like. If they say, hey, in this panel, we're showing the Punisher episode one. And you're like, oh, the Punisher. You mean that guy who goes around slaughtering Mm -hmm. criminals. And you walk in there and you watch it and you're like, wow, he's killing people on this show. That's very disrespectful for what happened in Las Vegas. Well, you kind of walked into that situation yourself. You know, it, it's not like they had him out there holding a unicorn stuffed animals and giving out candy. Yeah. But at the same time, I understand that they're like, hey, um, you know, we. I, I mean, I, I, I can see it going either way. You know, yeah, it's a double edged sword. They then they they made a call and and yeah. uh, it's not. I'm not, not, not going to bash them for it. Yeah, that's that's not a bad one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> however, the other thing that they like shut down during the con is the the other big talk of the uh, town. And that was uh, retailers became heated over Marvel's variants and other issues behind closed doors. So uh, what they did was they had uh, there was an exchange uh, between direct market retailers and Marvel Comics editors. Uh, they became heated in the closing minutes of the Marvel's retailer only panel at New York Comic Con this year. Uh, like we said last weekend, uh, starting after an unidentified retailer explained. Ex- expressed concerns about Marvel's lenticular variants not selling well in his store. And I would probably argue, he would probably also argue that Marvel's stuff isn't selling well anyways. (laughs) So, basically what he was saying, he's like, nobody's coming in and buying these comics where Iceman is gay and stuff. First of all, yes, because that's not an original concept. Make a homosexual character that is you know, like, okay, well, hey, here's this nope. brand new character. He's able to, I don't know, uh, manipulate asphalt, you know, and he he just happens to be homosexual. Okay, there's a that's guy. Fine. Whatever. They already have oh, yeah. one. They already have one in huh? Alpha Flight. Psst. Yeah, so check they, out they North, had Star. North Star. I mean, which they turned <laughs> gay, but that was, like, but you know, uh, that was a like they actually did that well. Yeah. Especially considering previously he was some kind of like magical fairy with super speed or something. It was <laughs> he was a stupid character. So like actually changing him, be it for an agenda, be like, hey, this he might work better like this. Yeah, but wasn't improvement for him. But they stuck with it though. That's the thing, yeah, and that's yeah. why everybody's so upset with them gender bending characters for like a, an arc. Let's put it this way: they didn't change Norstar to being gay and then start calling him Wolverine. Right. He right. stayed North Star. Right. And if you ever read Enemy of the State, he was absolutely badass in that, even though he was evil. Well, um, that's, a, so, that's I always argued that's that's what they should do next. They should do an Alpha Flight movie. That would be so cool. Oh, that cool. would actually be cool. That, that or Great Lakes Avengers. I love both of those. If anybody doesn't know who Alpha Flight is, it's the Canadian Avengers, basically. 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 Um, so, so, so somebody brought that up. Um well, yeah, because you've changed the beloved character, and the way you did it, basically, he had a psychic force this change on him. He didn't seem willing to do it. <laughs> Another thing is, like, the comics since then, they're literally him saying, I'm gay the entire time. Like, this <laughs> like, Omega level mute, instead of saying, okay, well, I like dudes now, but I still gotta save the planet, he's like, his per- complete person, his personality is completely changed. And how it's like, I'm really gay, but I also have to save the planet sometimes. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, I, again, I'm going to go back to this, and I'm going to say it until I'm blue in the face, is this character called Freedom Ring. He was in just a one-shot comic, and the point of the comic was to show that a normal person like us, if we got a magic weapon or a super weapon, we couldn't survive in the comic book world. Because <laughs> it was, think of it like a more serious version of the Frank Grimes episode, of um, Simpsons, yeah, where he was like a normal person, he couldn't survive in the Simpsons world. That's basically what he was supposed to show. And the guy was like, "Okay, and he's gay too." And guess what? That came up all of two times in this right. comic. One where he got asked out on a date. Uh, another when 
the guy was at the hospital and his or he went on a date and then a crime happened. Instead of it being thought, a part of the character, you're saying what they did with Iceman was they was it Iceman, right? Yes. That what they made him do was try and continuously throughout the run of the comic convince people that he was gay. Basically, well, well, like, okay, let's take the last one of the most recent the ones that came out. The beginning of it, he he and some of his friends go and jump this person who's making a prop for a movie. It's a Sentinel. And he's like, this is a hate symbol. And he's, she's like, I'm making this for a movie. That's what I was hired to do. And he basically destroys it. So she gets pissed off and builds a real Sentinel. And, or she says that. So that's the beginning of the comic. And it cuts there to where he's like, just on at this gay bar or something. I don't know. In this gay club. And he's just saying, oh, this is my first gay drink. Oh, this is my first gay dance. Oh, this is my first gay oh, kiss. God. I'm like, what hey. is this? This is Iceman. Why isn't he doing stuff? And now, to be fair, I do like stories where they have, like, downtime. Like, you see, like, yeah. the first episode of the, the X-Men cartoon, when, or first or second, when they're at the mall. And, like, Gambit's buying the extra cards and stuff. Right. And then it comes in. That's a really cool scene because you get to see the heroes on their downtime. They kick butt. But it's like, this goes on and on and on for pages. It's not like a three or four page thing. It's like 12 pages later and the villains just announced she's about to attack this club. Right. And then it jumps in and then it, like, kind of cuts away from the fight. It's like, that's not, that's boring. I've got plenty of gay friends and that's not what they want to want to read. They're going to want to read Iceman or whatever ca character you have, appealing, interesting character, do interesting, crazy things. I don't want to sit there and watch Superman pay his taxes. I mean, Phil, this W314, that's not what I want to see. That's not how I identify with him. Watching them having to pick up the what kind of pants they're going to wear, that's not interesting. I want to see him take down. I want to see him fight the Hulk. I want to see... Gladness come down. I want to see him have to take on an army of people and use his ice powers to make an army of ice clones. Right. But, so anyways, so, so yeah, so the realtors started getting mad at him because they're like, hey, you're forcing all these people on us that nobody's buying, and you're cutting into our profits because Marvel's what brings everybody in. So... And not to mention it, the fact they're making you buy a bunch of books that you're not, never going to sell. Exactly. And so... So Lowe pointed out, Tom or Nick Lowe, he pointed out that the changing nature of identities of characters was ingrained in Marvel's history, pointing out examples from James Rhodes, who had taken over the Iron Mantle a couple of times. I guess yeah, what? But, he sent it to the comic, and but, he always was willing to give it back. Yeah, I was going to say he did it because, what, Tony got literally almost destroyed and was in traction for a while. Another that, time when he went insane. Another time when he was on a drunk bender. There's story reasons for it. It wasn't yeah. just a, oh, well, we're going to make Brody Iron Man. Yeah, he didn't go, oh, any, many, money, you, that guy. And then yeah. that guy happens to be ten times smarter than everybody else in the room. Right. And Rhodes, Rhodes half the time was like, I really don't want to do this. I do not want to do this. Right. And they showed, um, they showed issues when he started doing it because he started going insane because the suit wasn't built for his brain. Right. Not like he wasn't intelligent enough to use it, but it was literally... The AI configuration was... brain. Right. It was configured for it. Right. Yeah. Um, and then he goes... And he pulls out Frog Thor. Frog Thor was Thor... If I remember correctly, Loki turned Thor into a frog. It wasn't that they just picked a frog to become worthy. I, I don't remember the comic exactly. Um, either way. It's like... But that was a stupid one-off story, dude. Or that one time the Thor was a, uh, a horse. <laughs> right? <laughs> Beta Ray Bill. Right? Oh, no. Pfft. That's different, no. I know, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. Don't let me get into better really Bill's backstory, but he's a good character. I would love I would love more comics with him in there. Maybe um, maybe when we don't have any news you can do a big expose on Beta Ray Bill. Maybe I should. Uh, he's so good. Um so the realtors responded that Marvel has never placed them all replaced them all at once before. And and it, uh, fans will go, and they're like, when they see, when they want Thor, they want like the Chris Hemsworth looking Thor, or they want the Steve Rogers Captain America. They see that they're well, yeah, because cool. because Marvel said, hey, we want to make these great movies, and then they made these great movies, and people want to see these characters more because they identify with the movie characters. That exactly. is, listen, 
that's uh, what's what's that called? Uh, like advertising 101. You're showing this big, larger than life character, and somebody wants to see more stories to that person. So what do you do? You run a ton of Thor comics because for some odd reason, there's a hundred people that have never read a comic book before, but are like, man, where can I get more about Thor? Or where can I get more about Iron Man? It, it should have been an easy sell, and they're just deciding to, to push an agenda rather than. Make sell money. their sell their books and, and make money. And, and let me tell you, because I've seen this, and they pick up a comic, and they're like, "Why is this says Thor, but why is it a girl in there?" And then somebody, some weird nerd like me, has to come over and be like, "Well, Thor is no longer worthy of the hammer, and somehow the hammer managed to transport this chick to the moon because all of a sudden it's got that power, and not even Odin could pick it up, and Odin's the one that got it created." And they go, "Okay." And they slide it back in there, and they're like, "Oh, hey, look, a Sonic comic." My Hello, little Sonic, My Little or Ponies. Details. Hey, My Little Pony, yeah. <laughs> well, they see Captain America, and they're like, "Well, why does he have wings, and why is he a black guy?" And they open it up, and it's like, "Why is he being so hateful?" Is it Captain America? <laughs> no, like, then we like, is it Captain America supposed to be like picking the little man up and like? There's a, let, let, let's put it this way: Captain America is the kind of guy. That if you're trying to arrest him, this happened in the Civil War. You're trying to arrest him for something that's not even illegal yet. He'll beat all of your friends up. He'll jump out of the building. He'll and you're flying a jet to catch him. He'll crash into your jet, force you to land, and then take you out for burgers. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what Captain America's supposed to be. He's the nice guy. So I'm that will beat the crap out of you. So I'm reading so ahead. Just, I'm reading ahead in the notes and. Huh? Uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, go ahead and finish, and then I'll bring up what the last part is because uh, uh, there's another thing that's not in here that they actually complained about too. Okay, so the they reiterated like so they reiterated that Marvel is bringing back many of its recently ab absent characters, including Steve Rogers, who literally came back to win the battle of Secret Empire or whatever, and then walk off. Right. Don't even get me started with that crap. Uh, Marvel would like to focus on creating characters and stories that reflect the world outside your window. A long-time Marvel adage. However, the thing is, the world outside my window isn't where I see this uh, this chick have this little girl walk up to her and be like, that's my shirt now, and steal it, and be like, now I'm you, and run off. Right. You know? Like, that chick is wearing her blue shirt. This guy's wearing his green shirt. That girl's wearing a yellow shirt. And I know who they are. That's kind of a weird analogy, but I hope that makes sense. Is that, like, I'm not seeing people just suddenly trade off their shirts. That person is who he is. That person is who she is. That person is who he is. And so on and so forth. Like, that's the word I was on my window. Yes, I guess, as in, if you want more diverse characters, you have plenty of of diverse characters just bring them to the forefront one of my favorite characters is the prowler from spider-man and he recently got kind of his own book but it was tied to that really stupid clone story or whatever that dan slot was crapping out right so, and so he was a clone and he had to take this drug to keep himself staying a clone and alive i think his name's hobie brown why can i never remember his name but he's got like the coolest outfit but that's not either here or there so all right. this seemed, so all this stuff um, seemed to do little to calm down the increasingly heated realtors who congregated around Marvel Senior Vice President marking Dave David Gabriel in the hall outside the panel, continue, continuing to express their frustration and anger over these issues. You totally skipped the word vociferously. Yep, I did. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, what? I'm trying to... Re I didn't want to sit here and Most mispronounce it, and then we spit to... a tangent on this. I'm like, I'm going to just skip this, <laughs> so I don't have to try to say it out loud. And we're going to, and I know Jeremy's totally going to let me get away with that because I'm trying to speak <laughs> stuff long. And now we're in another tangent, dude. Continuing to vociferously express their frustration and anger. So I heard what the that's, original, that's, the that's original an adjective, and that's not even needed in that sentence. It's redundant. It's to frustration uh, and anger. That's actually an that's a, that's an adverb. Or whatever I meant. <laughs> and another tangent. So what I originally heard the first question was from a retailer, or first complaint from a retailer was, you guys got to stop doing number ones all over again. 
Oh, uh, man, I wish they I were com- that. They were complaining about that, too. Yeah, they are not happy with the number of number ones. And, I mean, comic readers aren't either. They're like, oh, uh, this story's getting good. Oh, then next week they come out and it's number one again. And a different strand, a different Thor, or a different... See, you know. here's, here's what they're doing with the number ones. Number ones are always going to sell. That's why they release a thousand of them every month. Hey, do you know what happens when you oversaturate the market with number ones? Uh, the- hey, that's part of long-term thought. Does any of this stuff we're saying right here sound like it's long-term economic planning? No, no. Thank you. No. The, like the so marketing what- guy, David Gabriel, I mean, he's got like a whole stack of number ones at home that are worthless. <laughs> exactly. So what they're doing is they're like... Uh, screw it. We're just going to launch everything at the wall, and whatever sticks, sticks, and we'll cancel whatever that doesn't work. So, and then they want to kind of say, well, we obviously aren't doing bad because our number ones are selling. Look at this. Look at the, uh, look at the numbers on Diamond Select. Well, okay, but here's the thing. You're forcing, that's not sales. That's how many you shipped. When, yeah. when a comic store says, I want five issues of this, and you send them 15, that's padding your own numbers. Yeah. To make to make it look like it's popular, so you can try to reprint it. Second of all, number ones are always going to sell. But then you go and say, okay, well, let's see what your number two and three did. Okay, well, this this Captain Sunshine number one sold twenty thousand, but then Captain Sunshine number two sold three thousand. So obviously, it's not good. Yeah, yeah. Um. And so, they, of course, they completely missed the point of what the realtors were saying. People don't like it when you throw someone into an established mantle. Like we've said, if you want to win the crowd back, you have to make those characters interesting and likable. You can't just say, have every, every character say, oh, you're so much better than Mr. Whatever ever was. All That's right. all they've been doing. Like that that recent thing where like the new versions went back and saw their heroes before they were heroes. Right. And those old, those the original heroes are like, oh wow, you're so amazing and brilliant. Why does everybody love you? Like we, every anybody that had read a comic called that months ago when you first announced it because it is the most basic Mary Sue's crap. Um, people want new characters with their own hero names, like the little girl Miss Marvel. Why didn't y'all call her Kid Marvel or Girl Marvel? Yeah, you know. If you guys want to tie that together, don't give her Miss Marvel, or may, make her Flexi Kid, or or uh, Size Shifter. You know, Mrs. Bendy Arms. Or no, um, uh, and and this is something we've talked about over and over again. I mean, yeah. we we've talked till we're blue in the face that uh, what Marvel needs to do and DC and everybody. Well, DC we know needs to print other other things than Batman, but um, which well, they're what, getting better at. Getting Marvel better at. Marvel needs to invent again they need to be creative again because they're losing steam and they're losing steam fast and they're going to be right back where they were before and is, where they almost went bankrupt that was weird but, that thing you're playing with in your beard <laughs> oh this is uh, my back scratcher oh it's also a beard brusher it's a it's a yeah don't use don't use this uh don't use this back scratcher all right uh all right so clean. so uh we're gonna go ahead and move on to the movies and tv is that all right uh, yes, to, let me just finish with Marvel's been an absolute train wreck in storytelling lately, and they are it's like they have children writing in this stuff. Right. I don't know that that would be more imaginative than this, because <laughs> half the battles would be taking place in space, and they'd be fighting robot dinosaurs. Robot I'd buy dinosaurs. that in a heartbeat. Spider-Man versus robot dinosaurs in space. Dino Wars. There you go. All right, let's hit the movies and TV. Am I good? Can I hit the button? You're always good. Turn it up. All right, so uh, there was a Justice League trailer, uh, so I guess I can tag I that on here. Got to look at it. Hey. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, oh, you didn't look at it yet. Uh, uh, there was lots of smiles, and uh, and lots of jokes, and uh, some seriousness, and then it ended with another joke with. Uh, your buddy the Flash being a goofball. Um, it was kind of an awkward joke, uh, but it, it's it's it seems like that's all that this Flash can do. So, uh, and we won't enter the argument of the TV verse versus the movie verse uh, argument again. 
uh, plus the armor that you love so much. Um, the trailer looked all right, but uh, I don't know how they're gonna fare. And I didn't really want to talk about this, but the the uh, the and I mean I'm I'm totally jumping off of what what your your notes are for this, but um, the current climate within the the movie realm and and. By now, people should know what I'm talking about uh, as far as uh, sexual harassment and all that. Uh, between Joss Whedon's issues in the past, uh, what, three months that came up uh, yep. from his ex-wife and uh, this uh, stunning video of Ben Affleck uh, doing unthinkable things to, to a, a woman... Uh, things that wouldn't be a normal in the, in the public eye kind of thing that, that you would do. Uh, things that are not socially acceptable. How's that? That's a good word. Uh, I kind of wonder how well this movie's going to do. And I don't... Well, I, and, and and I saw an article about it, and somebody said, what happens if they lose if they lose their director and their Batman? Uh, what's that going to do to the DC-verse? Uh, well, if verse? you've also seen that they're not putting Josh Whedon on as director, they're leaving Zack Snyder. Um, and I wonder if that's part of the reason. One, Wait, because what? of everything. Was that a I, new change? I, I read that somewhere. Is that a new change? Well, no, you Zach know, Snyder talking back and forth. Zack Snyder stepped back because his... Uh, well, his because of his, his family ordeals. Yeah, his his son or his daughter. I can't remember which one it was. I think uh, it was his daughter. Uh, committed suicide. Died. Right. And, I wasn't trying to give all those explicit oh, details. I know, I know. But at this but, point... Uh, anyways, Joss Whedon took over, and Joss Whedon is getting the directing credit. Right. Um, His but I could have sworn that I... I don't think they're. I don't think they're changing it. Uh, you can go ahead. Again, and it up. could be a, a rumor. So, so while you're doing that, uh, I don't. I don't. That's just speculation on how well it's going to do. However, uh, so apparently we're getting a dark Superman for the Justice League. Is that true? Uh, I guess so. Oh, uh, but they did. I, was... I did hear they did come out and say he won't be Russian, right? Or was that something else? Wait, that wait, had something to do Russian. with the comics. Yeah. Oh, uh, Red Sun. There's a no. I know, but there was something. Something. Or uh, Superman won't be a Nazi or something like that. I think they're. Oh, doing... th so what? That was about the comic books. Oh, one of the, uh, okay. one of the guys said that we're not going to turn Superman into a Nazi ever, uh, because they're taking a jab at Marvel recently during the Secret Empire. They oh, had okay. a Captain America that was a Nazi. Steve okay, Rogers. Okay, so it was just a jump at that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So they're so... jabbing them for that really stupid decision. So so the Dark Superman is that a an expected thing then or what? So I guess what they're doing is um, oh, I'm about to send you the article by the way. Okay. So it's on the the documents, but um, so what supposedly they're doing? I guess. Again, I don't know. A lot of rumors have been flying around about this movie a lot, if you haven't noticed. But so Superman's probably going to come back as evil or dark or brainwashed or something during this movie and be violent. But as opposed to what Superman we, what other Superman have we seen on the screen? He's been dark and violent this entire time, you know. And I've I've, I've gotten into arguments with guys at work about this who are big DC fans who are like, uh. And I tried to explain to him, so one of the things you don't want to do in your story, there's there's like seven deadly words you'd never want an audience to say, is I don't care about these people. Right. When when I said, listen, if you have Batman dark and moody, that's perfectly fine. But you have to have a counterpoint to that. Superman traditionally is his counterpoint. Superman is the idealist. You know, the Boy Scout, the guy that rescues kitty cats from trees. Batman's the guy that lurks in the shadows, that scares women and children and bad guys, that snaps people's arms and legs, that will par temporarily paralyze people. Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing. You have to have a balance in your story. You can't have, if you have all your characters dark and mopey, and the story is nothing but a series of down notes. Right. You know, what's the point? Like, it's where do the characters, like, and you never have your characters grow? You said down notes, right? Yeah, yeah down notes. Uh, I mean, I mean, I don't know what, I, but but I mean, you understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, well, the movie starts out and you see Bruce Wayne's parents die. Okay, but now you see Alfred die all of a sudden. I don't know about what. Oh, well, you see. 
Batman just snapped the Joker's neck. Okay, well, that's another down note because he fell from his principles. Like, where is the where is the arc where like everything swings up? You know? Hey, did I tell you? Did I tell mm-hmm. you I actually watched Wonder Woman this week? Yeah, she told me that. It's the best best Marvel movie that DC has ever made. Yes, and they and- did a really good job. <laughs> Because I didn't know, and I didn't pay attention enough at the end of Batman vs. Superman, but uh, Bruce Wayne sent uh, Wonder Woman a picture, and it was that old picture of her and the, the guys. Mm-hmm. Everything that happened in that movie was a memory. That's how yeah. they did it. That was genius. And I didn't realize it till the end. I wasn't paying attention. I was like, well, why are they showing her in this futuristic setting when, you know, this was supposed to be about back then, and... That that was actually a really good story. Uh, remember, you I, don't remember our it. entire conversation about this. I don't. Where know. you're like, you'll never suspect the villain. I said, oh, let me guess, and I predicted it. I was like, you know how I know? Because it's the same Wonder Woman story they tell every time. Yeah, but but it was it was good though. But I, I know. I'm, but I I, I'm not I, saying it wasn't good. But you're like, oh, my, you'll never guess this. Oh yes, I will. My surprise. Because I, my surprise huh? was with. How they did it in the the mm-hmm. flashback, Vice doing a current story yeah, the, or yeah, like the flashback storytelling was neat. Yes, yeah, that's, um, I think that's, that's a like. pretty clever and kind of a touching thing. Yeah, um, yeah. there's actually a now you make me think of there's a robo robo uh, atomic robo story where um, it's back from World War One or two where he's he's flying in this plane with like this Asian guy. And he's the Asian guy's drunk and they crash. Right. And, um, you know, it's, it's this whole little adventure they have, and it's pretty fun. And then it flashes forward to him sitting in his office looking at the picture, kind of like what you're talking about. Right. And he's actually holding a, or he might be holding a letter. And, oh, yeah, it's, uh, and it's addressed, Mr. Robo, you know, uh, I found this picture of you and my grandfather in, uh, you know, in his stuff, and he recently passed away due to some kind of cancer or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it was just like this really sad moment where Robo Robo's basically like dreading his uh, immortality, and he has to he writes a letter back to her thanking her for the thing and just describing the relationship he had with uh, her grandfather. You know, saying, "Oh, you know, he uh, this was taken this photo was taken right after we crashed again." <laughs> and I will never forget that time your grandfather uh, tried to challenge me to a drinking contest. Please remember that I am a robot and I do not have a mouth. <laughs> so right. that's actually yeah. So that kind of that sounds like it's a really good like plot device or right. I don't or story setup. Yeah. So. Ooh, excuse me. Um. So that's so that's really good and it's kind of touching, but yeah. yeah. I mean. But, but I just again I just crack up you thinking that I wouldn't figure out one of one. Well, why. no, that's that's not the thing. It was just how they yeah. delivered it. It was neat. I yeah. actually enjoyed it. And... The delivery, yes, which is good. Um, so, but circling back, yes, Dark Superman. So there might be an evil Superman in this movie. I don't know what that means exactly. Uh, if because ninety means... percent of the Justice League movie looks pretty much like the first Avengers movie, I'm going to assume that Steppenwolf takes him over, or resurrects him, and takes him over. You know what that means, right? Like they did everybody, Hawkeye. What? Everybody in the Capitol was right. What if Superman goes off the hook and starts killing everybody? Well, thank goodness <laughs> they had the Suicide Squad. And they have a silly clown girl and a guy that climbs really good and a guy with boomerangs. Oh, and a guy that can shoot okay. And a guy that can shoot good. Yes, those those, those are, that is your unstoppable force to take out Superman and a crocodile God, that, and a crocodile man who thinks he's pretty. All he right, does, he just stands around. He does an invulnerable, super strong guy. You have him do nothing for the entire movie. What the? If, in How case, people like that movie? I don't understand. In case you guys were wondering why I didn't pull pictures, this is why. All right, uh, Bob's Burgers is cooking up a movie for 2020. Uh, yep. That is awesome. No, uh, it's not. Based off the current trends of the show, oh, no. it's probably going to be a freaking musical. Oh, come because on. every episode has a song in it. The musicals are great. Like, the, so dinner, theater, the dinner theater one was great. The dinner theater one was okay, but now it's like every episode has a song in it. And it's like, what is this, My Little Pony now? And here's the thing. Friendship is magic. If, like, the Friendship is magic. Sing, but none of the characters <laughs> can sing. But that's the funny part. That's the. It's annoying. Oh, okay. 
All right. I, I just can't right. say. And the thing Instead, is, I love Bob's Burgers. Well, hey. first couple episodes, it took me a little bit to get to them, but then I fell in love with the show. Let's, and then like, I jumped let's, back into it, and it's nothing but singing. Let's all stop watching Bob's Burgers and go watch a bunch of guys do do poses to fight. Okay, that makes sense. At least they're not singing. And it's, no, they're just standing there instead. It's like if I wanted to see pictures. Majestically. If I wanted to see pictures that didn't move, I'd watch. I'd read a comic book. All right. Uh, oh, how to read at this point? You never read anything. Yeah, anymore. right. I can't read anymore. All right. Uh, the other bad news that we've seen around is uh, Ash vs. the Evil Dead season three has been pushed off until February twenty fifth. A show that would have already started because it's October and it's Halloween month. I don't know if everybody else knows. That's the perfect time to release Ash vs. the Evil Dead. This is totally when I'm into the... like. This is when like my my horror biological clock kicks in for the year. It's like, I don't like... This is the only time I want to play horror games and really watch horror movies. I do it occasionally. Kay is upstairs right now watching Friday the 13th, because today is Friday the 13th. She is up there watching the... She... The horror movies year round for her, but it intensifies in October. Uh, but yeah, so uh, the bad news is is that Bruce Campbell is has gone on the record as stating he is unsure if season four is going to happen, which has sparked a campaign to uh, uh, I can't remember what the hashtag is. Uh, it's some, something about bringing back the Evil Dead or something like that. Save evil. Evil Dead. I don't know. Uh, so, so they don't know if there's going to be a fourth season, which is terrible. Uh, the show is great. I think that they've done such a great job with with making the uh, uh, the series what it is. And and really, honestly, TV shows have gotten better uh, now that they uh, have uh, focused into like ten episodes. I'm trying to see if I can find the hashtag. I yeah, it's, it's a lot tighter, more focused storytelling. You don't have much filler or delays with sh- with seasons being shorter. I, I really enjoy that, um, as opposed to trying to force in like 26 episodes. Although it really sucks when you finally get that season one on Blu-ray or whatever, and it's like, oh, well, you know, six hours later, you're done with the sh- series. And I'm like, that sucks. Um, but hopefully it hopefully it does now here's the thing um you know you made a note here going the way of oh other here it shows is like firefly and clerks first of all we got three seasons out of it you know even if they cancel after three seasons and they wrap up the story that's pretty good on to me with firefly they got what barely one season see adam's got it <laughs> I told totally him to do that at the beginning of the episode. Right, and number yeah, two, know. Clark's the animated series. They made six episodes. They broadcast four of them, and they showed them out of order. That is one of my favorite animated series. I love that. that I love that, that show. Was ahead of its time, right? Last if time it, on Clerks, <laughs> so great. God, <laughs> like, that was a good the, show. The, they did it for the first episode, and it was just the fuzz. The, yeah. yeah it was like, beep. <laughs> so, so it's hashtag Bring Back Boomstick. <clears throat> was the uh, the hashtag for the uh, save save the evil dead and there's petition there's a change.org petition and all that good stuff like uh, uh, as a as a you know card carrying member of Ash's Legion I've I've signed it as well um I mean see I have a card you can't see what it is but you know anyway so uh, yeah so so we don't know if that's going to happen or whatever but uh it sucks it really does. If if it ends, I hope they at least got to put some kind of closure to the end of season three. Which well, I yeah, seen well, yet. with season two, they did have some closure there with like a sequel hook. Yeah, uh, so I was cool with that. Uh, and who knows? Maybe after season three, we might get another movie. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, that'd be awesome. That would be, be awesome. Really awesome. I could totally do that. I, you know what? Maybe they need to start doing that. Like when you write like a show, that you have to have it a contract. Okay, well. If you cancel this, you have to give me a movie, even if it's a made-for-TV movie, to wrap everything up in. Well, they, or you could do, like, uh, Game of Thrones. You know, they said Game of Thrones, se- uh, the last season, uh, all the episodes that are left, I think it's only six, but they said they're going to they're gonna run about an average of a movie time now instead of just an hour, uh, which is awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of the show, so. 
All right, uh, let's hit the gaming. We got a couple of stories to hit there, and then we can get out of here and let you guys go. Uh, though we appreciate you hanging around as long as you have so far. Sorry about that. I did not intend for well, comics to last that long. That was a long section of comics. Hang on. Man, I love Mega Man. They should bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> Reboot Don't Mega Man. Me that. Reboot Mega Man. All right, uh, the Batman Arkham series developer Rocksteady has said that they have a new game in in the works that will make fans lose their mind. And I think, and I hope, what this means is is that fans of their system, which has been used in Batman, uh, mm-hmm. the Mad Max game, and also Shadow of Mordor. The combat system basics are all the same. It's the the action RPG button masher and combo and combo generator. That was like one of that's probably the, one of the best like fighting systems. Oh, it really is. Ever uh, built. The the timing the timing uh the timing combos thing is great. Mm-hmm. I love getting it and it's kind of like it feels like cheating. Maybe I should kick the difficulty up. On Shadow of Mordor, I'm getting like 30 plus combos before I end combat. So, I have executed about what three or four orcs with the finishing moves in that time. So, but Batman, I love the Arkham series, and I really need to sit down and do a playthrough, even though I know that'll be a daunting task since I have never finished Arkham Knight, and I need to send you that X- Xbox copy. Um, but that excites me because they're good. They're great games. They've put out. The Arkham series, I don't know how you feel about it, but they are very, they are very, uh, uh, authentic on their characters. Now, okay, the Arkham series, Arkham Asylum, yeah, and you know I am not a Batman fan. When I picked that up, I was like, oh, well, this will probably be okay. I'll just try it out. Yeah. And I absolutely loved it. That's what I thought when I got it, too. I was like, I don't know. At Arkham City, I got that, and I was like, I mean, and it, you know it's How it's it be not better? perfect, but it's pretty freaking close, right? Um, they brought in some, you know, they brought in characters that I wish had been in Arkham Asylum. We got they expanded on stuff. Not to you mention, know, had, not, it was not to mention that we got more Mark Hamill. I mean, yeah, it, 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 that's the amazing thing is the all star cast of voice actors that they've had for the series. It's amazing, right, yeah. and and then. And then, he, despite the ending of Arkham City, we get some of those ve- voice actors back without spoiling for anybody who hasn't played. Uh, and and in the best way ever. Did you play it yet or no? You I played Arkham Origins you have, okay, you up until played... the Mad Hatter uh, thing where it glitched on me and I couldn't get through the door. I gotta, And then what? when I tried to start it back, it glitched on me, and I couldn't open up a. It would, like the menu would never pop up. I said, "Well, I guess I'm not going to play this game." You won, uh, black, uh, black mask. Bravo! I I, uh, I will st- uh, Monday. I will send that game to you, and you'll forget playing the other stuff, so you can see what I'm talking about. Because it's been no. years, and you haven't you haven't even well, it's been a year, and you haven't even heard or played it. So you well, need Arkham Knight. I didn't play it because like the. Well, I felt bad for the PC guys that it, oh. they got completely. Don't feel sorry for them anymore because I I played a little bit on my computer and it's it's fine now. The, everything's patched out, but I also paid about five bucks for it, so uh, that's neither here nor there. But seriously though, it it deserve, that means I bought it twice. People, that, don't worry, I paid sixty for the Xbox copy. Uh, uh, anyways, anyways, uh, that yeah, they they make great games. That's and you can expect great detail out of their series, whatever they put out uh, on their engine. I cannot wait to see what it is. Do you have any speculations? Okay, well, one, I'm hoping it's not a Batman game because I think they... they they've really already said it's not going to be... They said it's not going to be Batman. Okay, so they it's not going to be Batman. So if they're doing a DC character, I've got... No, don't say it. Don't say it. He doesn't need a game. No. No. Skip the F one. Go. Keep going. Okay. Well, since I can't say him, the Flash and he told is a terrible the, game. The Flash is terrible idea. You won't be able to see anything that's going on on the screen, and he'll just be able to go faster than everybody else. Game over. He's like he he is like one of the he, what his challenge is anybody that can stop time, right? And that's it. Everything else is just simple. He can outrun bullets. He can 
stop bullets, right? You can just pluck them out of the air. Well, I mean, you have a level up system to where, like, he has to learn those abilities, you know? Yeah, but I could just go watch the TV show. But, the, also, <laughs> I could see that, that that would mean potentially a lot of quick time events. That would be awful. But, yeah, hey, press uh, X so for every one of my others, out of the Two of my others would not, they wouldn't have to deviate far from the the uh, Batman uh, designs overall. Would be uh, Etrigan. No, no. He's a demon that's bound to Jason Blood. Oh, okay, okay. Jason Jason Blood was uh, well, at least with the comic, uh, the the cartoon canon, he betrayed King Arthur. Yeah. Um, and for punishment, Merlin bound his soul to a demon, and so he's lived forever, basically trying to um, repent. Right, right. And he does the iconic "Gone, Gone" to form a man, awaken the demon. Etrigan or Arise the Demon or whatever. Right, right. Um, yeah, that one would be cool. I can't so, yeah, so you could... One. So, yeah, that would be cool. Um, I also would like the Creeper. I don't think that either of those are actually popular enough to get a game, though. I don't think they're gonna... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah okay. Uh, long story short, no, neither one of them... But you asked me what I would like them to be, not what I think they'll be. Uh, didn't I say what um, I think? Let's see. Who do I think they're going to be? They might do... I I think it's the WW. I think that's the one they do. I was going to say the that would, do Wonder Woman one. Because a sword and shield would work. You know well, what I, I mean? mean? Yeah, they wouldn't even have to do a sword and shield. They could just hand yeah. to hand. Especially if she's fighting common thugs. Hold on, hold on. Perry, yeah, you push X to talk to dolphins. Yeah, I got it. We're not doing Aquaman, sorry. <clears throat> I totally agree with you, Perry. It would be a good one if they could do it right. Yeah, okay, as long as he stands in a puddle. <laughs> as long as it's raining in freaking Metropolis. So, um, what else? <laughs> I mean, they might try to do a Superman one. I think uh, it's... I, I don't see that one either. There, Superman, <laughs> Superman was our... <laughs> it's nice to see when it catches up. Uh, Superman, Superman uh, has been done by Blizzard North a long time ago, and it was kind of crap. You still have your copy of the 64 version of Superman? Yeah, Superman. I think I do. But yeah, but here's the thing. The reason that failed, is I'm not going to blame the developers on that. I'm going to blame the executive meddling because they kept them from doing all this stuff. If you saw their original vision and all the prototypes they had, yeah. it was going to be a kick-ass game. Yeah. But then they said, they were like, okay, well, Superman, there can't be bullets in the game. Okay. Well, Superman can't punch actual people. Well, um, okay. Also, and, you know, it's like all these stipulations, like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Um, now, what else would I expect? I mean, a cyborg one could technically work, depending on when they're going to plan to release it. Um, now, here's my thing with, with hey, the creep. I'm going to end it right here, okay? Uh -huh. Because I can tell you exactly why Wonder Woman should and probably will be the one. Because the mechanics are already there. In Batman, because the thing is they have the they have the close the gap action, but they also have the block actions. It's already the, in the engine, so they're just gonna it's gonna be a reskin of Batman, but with Wonder Woman. But and, what Wonder Woman does not do stealth though. She goes through and she smashes a wall in, and she throws somebody through the roof. It'll she, be like it'll be like God of War. She's a war machine. That's why I'm saying like Etrigan or. Or Creeper could work because they fight like super strong Batman. But I don't think I don't think they want to do another yeah, they stealth might, game. They don't they don't have the name for it. You're right. They don't have the they don't have the recognition level, which is gonna be an issue. But counterpoint to that is that if they're the Batman Arkham developers, people are going to already have eyes on it and yeah. buy it because it was these guys that did it. Well that's you and know? that's why they said their fans are gonna go nuts over it. But I I seriously think the next big thing to take off, and I wish people would stop sending me messages. Um, the the next thing that's going to take off is the. Uh, it, I think it's going to be Wonder Woman. I honestly think it is the the best DC movie to this point, and it it has the best legs to carry right now. I just don't. But it's like if we are taking their word literally, I just don't see people losing their minds over that. They'll be like, oh, okay, well that was. 
kind Everybody, of expect. Are you kidding me? Everybody has lost their mind over that Wonder Woman movie because it's an uh, actual good DC or DC movie. Well, the it's not you. It's not you. So it's badly. not you. It's everybody else. It had a wider appeal. That yeah. movie was yeah. that movie was on point. I'm, and I, I don't, think, I'm not know, trying to bash the film. I'm just saying. I don't understand why people went nuts over that, but think the first Avenger was stupid. Exactly. I have a problem with that. That movie was really good. And I even pointed this out. I said, okay, well, people are saying that Captain America, the first Avenger movie, was mediocre at best, but they're going crazy over one woman, and it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Except hers was in World War One, his was in World War Two. But Fish Out of Water, super strong character that was See, is wearing patriotic-looking armor. I got two people agreeing with me. Perry says yes. Okay. Adam says yes. I don't see it. Like... If they announced that today, I'd be like, oh, well, that's not a surprise. All right. That doesn't make me lose my mind. Boys, but if they announced like it. Creeper or something, I'd we're, be like, holy crap. We're calling They are it. taking a major risk there. But they said people are going to lose their minds, not look confused. <laughs> yeah, but that would, that would make people lose their minds. You no, know what, because ooh, somebody you know says... I, would like, you know, I know it can't be made with this engine, is um, Stars and Stripes. Oh, dude. You, remember, if, you know the one I'm talking about? The girl and her dad? I or think, stepdad. I think I know what you're talking about, but I just thought, what if they got a hold of Marvel? <clears throat> what if we get an X-Men, or not an X-Men, but a Wolverine game, an actual good Wolverine game? Oh! That would be awesome, right? <laughs> Stealth. Uh, the combat is basically the same. Or you could do you know, the old man Logan version, and he just doesn't give a crap, and he just starts killing everybody. <laughs> Perry didn't like that. <laughs> Is is next week next week's discussion is Wolverine the 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 Batman of the Marvel universe? <laughs> like that's closer to Black Panther or Moon Knight, which either one of those getting a game would make people lose their minds. But you know what? I'd be Black Panther because his movie's about to come out. Oh, you know what? Be, I am a thing. Or Daredevil would be all right too. Daredevil would work. It's got to be so. It's got to be the 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 big thing is is it has to be somebody that's hand to hand, because if those are the same mechanics. And yes, <laughs> yeah. See, wider appeal right there. He says his wife would probably actually play the Wonder Woman game. Uh, I they can't make it a gun game because well, well, we had the Punisher. That game was awesome, by the way. If you've never played it, get it. And I don't know how Deadpool was because I've never played it, but uh, Deadpool was okay. It would have been more mediocre if it hadn't had Deadpool in the title. Oh, okay. So, all right. Uh, well, let's push into this last thing. Uh, this is the la- This is one of the things that I mentioned in the intro, so we have to do it. Uh, Sony Interactive's head steps down, which means maybe we'll finally get crossplay with the PC and the Xbox, like all gamers deserve. Uh, listen, I I'm not a huge fan of consoles because I've always been raised on on computers and and Nintendo systems which doesn't play well with others anyways. So I'm not really worried about that. But there's no reason I can't get on my Xbox and play uh Rocket League with Adam on his PS4. There is literally no reason other than the fact that Sony is still stuck in feudal Japan instead of in the now with everybody else. They're worried about one thing only and it's to sell their systems. And Microsoft has gotten over it. Microsoft, over the years that they have created the Xbox, understand that the system is their lost leader. It doesn't matter. The the sales is in the games, not in the freaking system. So if they sell a number of systems because of their games, because somebody prefers the controller... Look, my, my PC controller, right here. My Copper Shadow. I love this thing. And yeah, see, you got one there too. Yep, people, that's why I've been playing on the PC more these days. People have people have their preferences of their controller. If people like your PlayStation controller, they're gonna buy a PlayStation. Uh, but your 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 single player games, those experiences that Sony is has in spades. I will be the first to admit right here on the show. I hate Sony, okay? <laughs> but they have the best exclusives. They're gonna sell. Uh, the the oh, Last the, of Us, have, The Last of Us, Uncharted. Uh, though that last one didn't really look that great. Um, even that new series that they they just released with the two female adventurers looks really good. Uh, uh, oh, that, the uh, the Horizon Dawn, Horizon Zero I, I really Dawn. That one, uh, the zombie one that's coming out where it has yeah. tons of zombies and it's like The Last of Us but 
a little more gritty or more like along it, the it lines of Walking Dead. more of a, not Dead Rising. There was another game like that. Um, they, the they, Spider-Man game that's coming out. Look! Look at! Look at! There! There's another one. There's six exclusives that aren't going to be on the Xbox One that will sell PlayStation systems. People aren't buying the Xbox One for their exclusives. They're they're literally non-existent. We saw that at the uh, at E3, and we commented on that. You look at the PlayStation versus the Xbox One uh, convention, and they were literally almost the same, except that Sony had exclusives, and PlayStation, uh, their exclusive is PUBG, which is also on the PC. Sony literally has exclusives that I can't play. But I don't want to buy a PlayStation because I don't want to just buy those couple of games. So that, But that's a personal preference. And you're never going to win over me, okay? But I want to play with my friends that have those systems because that would be really cool. And I do. I get to play against people on the PlayStation when I play Rocket League, but I never play with Xbox players and PlayStation 4 players. It's either with one or the other. They have it separated so that they never they never interact, which kind of sucks. Uh, it sucks. And it's also lot. weird because, remember, they've actually got it set up to do it. They just have some kind of firewall or something blocked. Well, remember well, that that happened? Fortnite. Is it, it actually glitched on them, and there was Fortnite. like, for an hour and a half, they were able to play together. Yeah, it was Fortnite. Fortnite had it happen. Was it Fortnite? Yeah. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was uh, Rocket League. Rocket League play. had it happen, too, a long time ago. Uh, when it first launched on the Xbox and the PlayStation 4. That was the big thing, uh, that it accidentally happened. But it also happened again with uh, with Fortnite. There was crossover, and there wasn't supposed to be when they were randomly queuing up with people. So, um, and I think something else recently. But that, that's, that. you know, maybe if they get rid of the old guard and start moving in the new brains, they'll f- they'll fix things. They they should realize that, that people, people want to stay in the Sony systems because that's what they're used to. And they're gonna raise their kids. My my son has an Xbox controller for his well his computer he doesn't have yet, but um it, he's got an Xbox in his room. He has an Xbox because I like Xbox, okay, and that's what I have in my room, and it just plays movies now. But I was always accustomed to the Xbox, and I I like that controller better. It fits in my hand better because I got bigger bigger claws, but. Your, your exclusives are going to be what sells stuff. And Sony is far and away should have no problem selling their systems. And they don't. They're always better than Xbox lately. They Xbox doesn't sell much. The, you're going to see the spike when the Scorpios hit. And you're going to see more Xboxes out there because they're, they're actually offering 4K. And not just in video plays from Netflix. So... But that that's that it, it needs to, it needs to go away. Do we need to be able to play all in the same system? You're totally f- fracturing the the large scale play field that we could have with everybody in the same ecosystem. And here's the other thing with that is that you know what that if you introduce that multiplayer, yeah, you might not be able to convince Jeremy, but you might be convinced somebody like me who is planning on buying a PS4. I just I haven't bought one yet. Uh, but if I played with uh, somebody that was, you know, if I was playing, I don't know, Dying Light or, or Dead by Daylight, whatever, Castle Crashers, and I was playing with somebody that had a PS4, they could probably talk me into it. Yeah. Buying it sooner than I intended. Right. And, you know, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of other people. And the more you have cross-platform uh, discussion, the more chances you have somebody re- pull them in and be like, hey, there are these single-player exclusives on here. You know, maybe you want to try them out. And, and you know, and, and Sony's the only one holding it back now because Phil Spencer has come out and said, we're ready. We want Sony to come to the table. And they've invited them multiple times and it's never worked out because Sony's some such or other. Uh, that's why I said it's, it's, it's an old guard problem. Nintendo's had that problem for years. Uh, however... Uh, at least some of those guys stuck around and decided to follow what I said before. And I always like that. That's like my claim to fame now is I called that they were going to make the Switch a cartridge system instead of a disc system. Um, just just from the way they made the system too, it makes from a stand from that standpoint makes sense. So it's just it's time to move on. We are at a certain point in our in our technological advancement that this should this is the dumbest thing ever. I, it made it made sense back in the PlayStation Two era with uh, the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Got it. They're they're both two different systems, different architectures, but 
as we've gone on in time, they've become closer and closer to uh, uh, singularity. And in those games, everybody, everybody says, oh man, that game looks great at E3, but then they get it home on their console and it's garbage. And it's because, guess what? All those demos that they're showing at the, at the, the expo are all running on computers. They're not Your running first on mistake is believing E3. Microsoft's Xbox. So, yeah. I know, I know. And that's the thing. is I, I have this expectation that the graphics may not be perfect, but I also have a 1080, so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> well, see, here's my thing. You know, and, you know, I've, I've, I've been the counterpoint before where I'm like, well, in the end, graphics don't matter. It's the gameplay fun. And, again, this is going on a tangent about E3, but then, like I said, like earlier, Evil Within, like, they completely sold me on a different game than what I saw at the E3 demos and everything else. And, yeah, some people enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy it because it wasn't what was promised to me. Right. Thing And things like that. So, so yeah, so step one, don't believe E3. Yeah, believe well, us. Uh, and, that's, and that's what I said. It, it's one of those things where I've learned to manage an expectation. And I, mm-hmm. and I know that I can reasonably expect my stuff to look better than a console's because of the, the system I have. And those people with consoles need to learn to manage their expectations at 30 frames a second. Um, but they're getting close to 60. I heard some of the some of the new Call of Duty on the Scorpio is going to be like 45 or something like that. But 60 is hard to do when you have a little box. So, all right. Uh, this seems like a good place to end it, don't you think? Uh, I might as well. Yeah. Right. I got work in the morning, <clears throat> and I'm grumpy when I don't get sleep. All right, uh, thank you again for everybody showing up uh, live who could join us, and thanks for all those of you uh, listening at home on the uh, podcast. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you could please leave us feedback on our episodes on iTunes or uh, Google Play Music. I took all that crap out before. Uh, please leave us feedback on our show wherever you get it from, uh, whether it's here on YouTube. Uh, you can leave feedback on the Facebook page uh, and, w- and wherever else you get the show from. Uh, and don't forget to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash stasisgeek if you can. Uh, like I said, it's not just the monetary. There's other ways that you can help us out. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we still haven't received an email for a point. If somebody sends something, we will bring it up. We 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 love the input. Yeah, we, now, we do get them sometimes. We do get messages and stuff. So. Oh, we get, yeah, we get the messages on the on the YouTube videos, mostly of yeah. people, you know, saying, you know, what they liked and everything. And some and every now and then we bring it up. Like, uh, I think the last episode when uh, Jay Dickens said something about, uh, what was that, the Southern Southern Bastards that we were talking about? Oh, yeah, uh, so. I, but I've totally forgotten. Yeah, no, well, that's why I just brought it up now. No wonder nobody wants to comment. We don't remember things. Well, he just said. Well, no, he just said that he he liked the Southern bastards. That's all. Oh, that, oh yeah. That's all. So so anyway, so go ahead and you can do your line now. <laughs> hey, so yeah, so speaking of content, you can contact us at ECG underscore podcast on Twitter, at our Facebook page www.facebook.com slash ECG podcast, or our email address at ECG podcast at gmail dot com. Also, visit our webpage, www.stasisgeek.com. That's S-T-A-S-I-S-G-E-E-K.com. Or post a comment on our video, and we will read it and then forget about it, like I just said. And there's actually going to be content maybe coming to Stasis Geek, like articles and stuff, if Jeremy ever posts them. Oh, oh, did you, did you was that one done? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It was right. done, like, weeks ago. Oh, I didn't know. You said it was, you said it was a draft. I didn't know. I didn't know. So... All right, yeah, I'll, I'll have to post that. Um, but uh, for sure, for sure, since it'll be my long weekend off, and uh, I know last week was my long weekend off and we didn't make good with it, but we will be back next week. Uh, the fall's kind of hard because we're, you know, we're running into all the, the fall stuff to do, so, uh, and it's so nice yeah. outside. No, it's, and, it's, and it is lovely up here, it's, yes. It's really miserable right now. It needs to stop being over 70. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I have friends in Florida that will punch you right now. It is it, it is fall and it needs to be cool. All right, uh, we will be back next week. Until then, stay geeky. <laughs> <laughs>